Costco loses over $30 million a year selling rotisserie chickens. We're going to explain why that is and how this important marketing lesson pertains to your med spa. All right, so why does Costco knowingly lose 30 plus million dollars a year selling rotisserie chickens, right? It's the concept of a loss leader. Loss leader is something that you do at a loss, some, it's something that you sell, an activity to get people in at a loss, knowing that you're going to make up for it somewhere else, right? So for Costco, the way that this strategy looks is, hey, we know if we can keep our rotisserie chickens dirt cheap, there's going to be people that keep their memberships because they want to access those. There's going to be people that come in more frequently. And because of that activity, having people come in for those $4.99 rotisserie chickens, I don't know, maybe $5.99 now since this article is written, I'm not sure. But people coming in for those rotisserie chickens, a certain percentage of them are going to go purchase other things, right? They're there and now they got to pick up a thing of paper towels and maybe reload on cereal for the week. And while they're there, they might as well grab X, Y, and Z that maybe otherwise they would have grabbed at Target or Walmart or at their local grocery store, right? So the concept of a loss leader is is forcing the idea of action changes attitude faster than attitude changes action. If we can get someone in, we know they're probably going to spend money in other places, right? To simplify that a little bit. And for med spas, that looks a little bit different, right? So people aren't going to come in for Botox and then stumble across the aisle and go get like lip injections and laser hair removal while they're in the med spa that day. But the same concept is at play, it just works a little bit differently. So you have to understand that with marketing and advertising investment as a med spa, you can't measure ROI on the initial visit. It's not a realistic way to grow your business and to set expectations for effective marketing. So if, if you were to spend $1,000 and acquire um, 10 new customers, that's $100 to acquire a customer. You can research industry benchmarks. Those are great numbers. If you can acquire a customer for every $100 that you're spending in ads, you're doing a really, really good job. So with that said, though, what if that person comes in for a $100 visit or they spent, it costs you $100 to acquire the customer and let's say they come in for a $99 facial just to play devil's advocate and simplify the example here, right? You don't make any money on that first visit. You broke even basically on the difference between ad spend and the service. Then you had cost of goods sold and maybe the esthetician of the person that provided services. So why would you do that? It's because action changes attitude faster than attitude changes action. The best way to cha change the perception of a prospect in your market is to get them to come in and have a good experience at your practice. I give this example now on client calls all the time. My wife and I, we now live in the suburbs of Nashville, 25 minutes east of downtown. We still, every six months, drive to our dentist's office when we used to live in the city which is a total pain. Nobody wants to drive into the city to go to a dentist from the suburbs. But the reason that we do that is because we have a perception that's shaped on experience by experience of our dentist. We know we trust him. We know we like the office. We're comfortable getting there. We like the hygienist that performs services. We know if something goes sideways, he's not going to try to upsell us and cross sell us weird things that we don't need. So because of that level of comfort and confidence, we still drive 30 minutes. I've driven 45 minutes in rush hour to go to my dentist. When I've got a half a dozen dentists that probably live within five minutes of my house, right? So getting people in the door to have an authentic experience at your practice is the best way to change and shape their perception. So this is the idea of a loss leader. In a way, everything we do in MedSpa advertising or a lot of it is going to be a loss leader, or you might just make a small amount on the first visit, right? Let's say it costs us $100 to acquire a customer and um, we're doing a Botox promo, 179 for 20 units, right? We're not going to make much money on those initial visits. So understanding lifetime value is really important. Thinking of your initial ad spend, in a sense, as a loss leader is going to set you know, put you in a better frame of mind for how to implement effective advertising strategies for your practice. So now let's tie the conversation back into like why that strategy makes sense. Why would we take a loss leader? So we don't want to measure ROI on month one revenue. So really ineffective nonsensical way to measure return on investment as a med spa. You're a, it's like a restaurant. You're a business that relies on retention and repeat business and repeat sales. So we don't want to measure month one ROI, but also if we look at lifetime value, that can be a little bit misleading too. Lifetime value is how much someone would spend with you on average over the course of the lifetime of being a customer. So if we say your average customer is with you for three years and they spend $1,000 a year, that would mean your average lifetime value of a customer is $3,000. But that number on that extreme doesn't explain how cash flow is affected in the short term. So we have our MedSpa ROI calculator that can kind of help you figure out, hey, if I spend this much money on marketing and I hit these benchmarks, 
what is the revenue I'm going to collect month one? But as I start to accrue patience, what should I expect that to turn into month three, month six, month nine, month 12, and so on? So knowing those numbers is really important. Understanding the concept that you're not going to measure your ROI month one in a sense, being willing to accept a loss leader if it makes sense from a cash flow perspective. Really, our goal, though, as a marketing provider is, hey, how can we make a little bit of money so that you're spending, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 month one on advertising, but you're making 10 or 15 and then you've got cost of goods sold. So you're still coming out in the positive, but the way that you're going to really see a lot of value from your marketing investment is your ability to cross sell, uptell and upsell and retain. So if you're a med spa that's pumping money into marketing and advertising and it's effective, you're getting a lot of people in the door every month um, and you are and you still feel like you're struggling to grow your business, your issues probably aren't marketing related. You're probably having issues with retention. Maybe staff retention is causing patient turnover. You're not do, you're, The people that are rebooking appointments don't have a, an effective system in place to effectively rebook at a, an adequate rate. The name of the game is dotting your I's and crossing your, crossing your T's and having all the little details down so that when someone comes in and has an experience at your practice, you're doing a great job of shaping their perception for the positive. If you're not doing that, you're going to be losing out. So little word of wisdom today, be willing to accept that loss leader or just making a little bit of money on the front end, knowing that that's going to be the catalyst helping you grow your business the next three, six, 12 months and beyond. One other thought I wanted to add here. So I mentioned that Costco does this with the rotisserie chickens because they know that some people will purchase other items. This is something I see med spa owners, aesthetics practice owners get caught up on sometimes. It's not that every person that comes into Costco for a $4.99 chicken is cross-sold, upsold, and purchases other things. There's probably plenty of people that go into a Costco every day, grab that rotisserie chicken for dinner, they already have the rest of the groceries at home, and they leave, right? So in that instance, Costco just lost money on that customer. It's the overall view of the strategy in totality, right? So if for every 100 customers that come in, if even if 50 of those people only purchase a rotisserie chicken and leave, Knowing their numbers, Costco knows that, hey, well, 50 others, 50% of them, 30% of them, 70% of them, whatever that number is, will also spend money on other products in the, in the amount of, on average, you know, $65, whatever that looks like. And knowing the math and knowing those numbers is what allows you to confidently leverage a loss leader type strategy, or at least a minimum profit type strategy on your initial visit. So know your numbers, really analyze your business, audit these things. When you're running ads on Facebook and Instagram or Google, we do leads audit spreadsheets with our client. So we actually go through all the leads. Our portal actually tracks that too. So we've got the opportunities tab in our high level software that tracks that. Um, but you can do this manually, export a list of all the leads you got from Facebook and Instagram. Look at how much they spent on, on, on services on their initial visit, how many of them rebooked, and what service did they rebook for? And at least give you a short snapshot window to tell, hey, we're confident that if we get people in the door, 50% of them, 60% of them, 40% of them are going to rebook, cross-sell, or upsell into other services. So know your numbers. Devil's in the details with all this stuff. If you got any questions, please shoot a comment down below, and I'll make sure to get to those.